I think we can all agree that jumping is a huge part of any platforming game. But if you take away the ability to hop around, you get something that looks like serious scramblers. This is a slight but enjoyable new action game that's all about falling down a giant pit, collecting coins, and avoiding the deadly spikes that are above. It's definitely a good time with a lot of charm, but will this simple concept be enough to hold your attention for long? That's what I intend to find out. With no story and very little setup, Serious Scramblers reminds me of one of those old-school arcade games that's all about vying for a high score. You play a character that can't jump, so the goal of the game is to safely navigate your way down a giant pit while falling on platforms and bouncing off of cartoony enemies. You'll want to pick up those coins along the way, which you can use to unlock new characters with unique abilities. Like I said at the top, this is a simple concept. Serious Scramblers is one of those games you can play with only one hand, making it accessible to pretty much everybody. But don't confuse simplicity for a lack of challenge, because these randomly constructed stages are filled with tough obstacles to overcome. The platforms will often have enemies on them, or spikes that'll pop up if you wait around too long. There are also guns shooting at our heroes, and even bad guys that fly around. And if you aren't quick and don't walk off the platform in time, the row of spikes at the top of the pit will turn you into a special kind of Swiss cheese. What I like about Serious Scramblers is that each of the unlockable characters is a little different. They'll fall at different speeds and change the levels in a number of interesting ways. A great example of this is Modico, who is able to literally stop time by standing still. This gives you a moment to figure out your next move, but the flip side is that your descent is actually faster than a lot of the other characters. A lot of the abilities come down to controlling the speed of the level and your fall, as well as being able to withstand enemy bullets and ground pound any bad guy that's in your way. These characters have pros and cons, and none of them break the challenge of the game. This is a tricky game to beat, no matter who you pick. The problem is that there just isn't enough content to truly take advantage of the large cast of characters. There are only 27 stages to beat in the campaign, followed by a straightforward endless mode that didn't hold my interest for very long. I was hoping to see a lot more variety in the levels, giving me a good reason to mix things up and try different characters. But there's nothing like that, and almost all the levels play out exactly the same way. The only real variation comes when you have to fight one of the challenging bosses, but even that ends up repeating more than I would have liked. And speaking of repetition, you basically see every obstacle after only a few stages. Apart from the occasional spike and flame platforms, there's not much to avoid in Serious Scramblers. You'll see the exact same enemies and gun turrets thrown every mode, which can be a real drag after a while. For a simple concept like this to work, it needs to constantly mix things up in order to keep you on your toes. Where are all the disappearing or moving platforms? Where are the portals, the walled off sections, and maybe even homing missiles? And that's just off the top of my head! With so many different types of obstacles to incorporate, it's incredibly disappointing that only a few made the final cut. Look, I'm honestly a little surprised by the lack of variety in the game. Even the backgrounds and side panels start to blur together after a while. One of the tricks a lot of developers use is to make drastic changes to the backgrounds to keep things fresh. There are slight variations and color changes, but it's subtle enough to where you might not even notice. That's a shame, because this game needed something to help each level stand out. And yeah, that's the problem I just couldn't shake. From the stage designs, to the obstacles, to the objectives, everything is too repetitive. Serious Scramblers is fun in short doses, but there isn't enough to keep me playing past a couple of hours. With the campaign being so short and Endless Mode being too repetitive, I found that most of my time was spent trying to unlock the different characters. I don't know, maybe you'll find that more compelling than me, but there just isn't enough to this game to make me want to recommend it. Serious Scramblers offers a solid concept with a lot of action-packed potential. I'm 
Unfortunately, the developers didn't do enough to keep the simple premise engaging. You'll see the same platforms, the same obstacles, the same enemies, and the same background so many times that everything's gonna blur together after a while. I love the wide variety of unlockable characters, but they aren't given enough to do in this short campaign. After all the repetition, I'm seriously scrambling to find a deeper game. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. In fact, we have a whole playlist with almost 600 reviews. Now here's the question I have for you. What is a game that would actually be improved by removing the ability to jump? I'm actually really interested in hearing what you come up with because that's a tough question. Jumping is so important to so many games. Anyway, let me see your answers in the comments below. In other news, I'm doing my best to catch up with reviews after my bout with the flu. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.